It's January 11th, 2015, and we want to know, has the age-old question finally been answered on whether Lobo is a Jim Croce fan? We asked the Batman of five years from now, Brucey, how's the beeping Brucey? Brucey, 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 Brucey. All this and more is coming up next. It's Season 2 at 14 of DCR, starting now. This day, we rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny, and usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Stress Citizens Radio. And welcome back to another episode, a fun, exciting, eccentric, eclectic, electric... E- ecclesiastical? <laughs> no, no, we're pulling okay. the line there. Okay. We're drawing the line at ecclesiastical. That's our new motto. <laughs> All right. Uh, of DCR, I, of course, remain your host, Sean Lamont, comic book reader extraordinaire, and that other dulcet tone that you just heard is my compatriot in crime, Mr. Brian Glein. Hello, sir. That almost rhymed. I know. I was trying, but my brain wasn't faster than my tongue, so it was just kind of going at that point. It was like, no, stop. No, no. Too late. (laughs) Uh, How are you today, man? I'm doing fine. Yeah? Are you ready to do some comic bookery? Sure. Uh, Do you think we can handle it, just you and me? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Are we going to have to call in the heater? Are we going to have to call in the closer? Maybe. Uh Uh-oh. Who do we have? Yeah, Kelly. Well, we're going to just take any build up there and just flush it down the toilet. We are also joined by the bubbly, effervescent, always lovely Miss Kelly. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Uh, I just got off of work. Yeah, that's the excitement I like to hear. Because nothing says, you know, have a great day than being up at five something in the morning. Well, yeah, because you get more of the day. That's why it's a great day. Right? Uh, Isn't that how it works? No, you get less of the day because you fall asleep earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. You lose you... out of the night. Nothing's happening then. Yeah, the that Saturday night, it's so nothing happening. I really like waking up when it's dark and getting home when it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Ohio and it's winter. That's how everyone lives. <laughs> I know. Like it's, 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 just, it's like living in our own personal version of 40 Days of Night. It really is. Uh, a fewer vampires, though. You, you speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Kelly, why don't you tell the lovely people why we are here? We are going to spoil your books. <laughs> yes. What are, what are we going to cover? Like, uh, New 52. Yeah. What, what about it? Like things that happened in the books? Everything. Like plot beats? Sure. Storylines? Yep. Character development? No. Oh, man, this is going to be hard. Let me edit my notes here real quick. (laughs) Uh, But as such, if you do not want your books spoiled, what should they not do? Don't listen ahead until you read your books. That's correct. Um, We do have one question. Well, it's actually many questions for this week. This is the... Very, very rare DCR real talk. We're going to actually have a serious talk real quick. I'm turning my chair around backwards so I can give you the real talk. I I actually have done the same. If Mm -hmm. this were a 90s school movie, I am now facing you with the the back of the chair. Or I would just be A.C. Slater. I need to find my... Would that my, work? My, my bleached, pleated jeans to you're, put on. You're kind of taking the serious out of this serious talk. <laughs> sorry, time. sorry. <laughs> uh, we have received a, shall we say, trickle of comments... Over the the time that we have been doing this show, uh, some of the things that we have done questioning the tone-deaf nature of our coverage of these books. Uh, before, it was things like uh, Labdell's con behavior where we made a comment on the show uh, praising something he had done in a book in the same week that a, a big story had broke that he had maybe done some inappropriate things at a convention. Uh, the Harley Quinn art contest, we've received emails on those asking why we weren't talking about the sexually explicit nature of the contest. Uh, we kind of shuffled it under the rug because why? That's not what we do. We're here to have fun. We kind of focus on the books themselves. We're not oblivious. And the reason this comes up now is because in the month of December, at the very beginning of the month, we were hit with a deluge, a deluge of emails from a, a lot of different people concerning both the Batwoman, uh, I, I guess for lack of a better term, vampire rape stuff that was going on there, as well as the Batgirl um, transgender issues that were going on with Daguerreotype. Was that his name or Daguerreotype? Dagger type. Dagger type. Yes. yes. 
and and some of the issues that had come up with that. We were not jumping onto the 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 problem that was going on with either one of those books because we focus on the stories themselves. Brian, you actually covered both of those books. Yeah. Yeah, I you know I I'm I'll be the first person to say yeah I just saw it as oh vampires be hypnotizing yeah that that's, know, that's that has, has a very long long history in in vampire fiction yeah so I was just like well it's vampires you know that's what they do they're evil um and dagger type uh, we recorded that one early that was a very early week for us and um we didn't hear about any of the stuff until later that night when I received a text saying oh Brian your new favorite character is very controversial I'm like. It's like Will Forte. I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. As I no. hit post episode. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah, because as a as a straight white dude, um, I just read Dagger Type as a hilarious indictment of the art modern art world. Yes, you know. Yeah, I mean, and you, that's you what have... I, that's what I got all my enjoyment out of. It's like, oh ha. ha. I totally get that. You have pretty close ties when it comes to the art side of things. Yeah. What with the whole education in art and yes. education of art. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is a it is a pretty close tie to you, so I'm sure you were immediately leaping to that aspect of the character. Yeah. And less other aspects of the character that were honestly just homogenized to you and I that we were just like, okay, that's who that guy is, whatever. We yeah. don't really care. Yeah. Uh the the thing is is that uh since these have increased I did want to get it out there that we're not going to cover those things. Uh we fully understand if there's one thing I have learned on my time on this planet, perception always trumps intent. Regardless, I don't believe any of these creators had the intent to offend, uh the intent to do something to paint people in a negative light uh or the intent to honestly cause this much controversy. I I believe at the best, at the very, very best, these people are artists first and marketers second. Uh, it, argument could be made for some people that they're marketers first and artists second. Boom. <laughs> Where's I'm, my sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that that is uh, the case in the current uh, crop of New 52 creators uh, or at, at any of the publishers. I'm just saying there are plenty of people that I have read that are marketers first. They understand that they are trying to sell popular art and that they are i'm just smiling knowingly over here yes and creatively (laughs) that pulls up a second place so regardless these people do understand that the fact that they have to market they're not trying to offend they're not trying to turn people off from buying their wares because that is very very counterproductive to what they are intending to do kelly what did you think about all this stuff as far as us just kind of glossing over the thing. You're kind of outside the box on this whole thing. Do you think that we should have maybe mentioned it and been like, that's bad, and then gone about our business, or just kind of went what we did and just said, that's someone else's thing, which there are plenty, plenty of places you can read or listen to people talk about these scandals. I don't think another one of our show tossed onto that pile is really of any worth, but yeah. do you think that was the wrong call on our part? No. Okay. I'd- you know, I think Kelly's biased. I belong. <laughs> I belong to a mom group. Well, we'll just put it this way. And when the box trolls came out, there was so much drama over the allergy content of that movie. That, oh, it's insensitive to kids with allergies. Actually, it's not. I, I watched the movie. I have food allergies. I saw it as a character that just is his thing. But oh my god, the drama about the movie. Okay. <laughs> So, why would we cover that? I It's like, I click on a link just to see what somebody's review of the movie was. Like, did you like it? So that I know, can I go see it? Was it good? Did it suck? That's what I was looking for. I was not looking for, oh my God, don't see this. This will offend all your children. It's like, so no, I, I'm glad that you guys didn't bring up all the controversy because when I'm coming to the information, you know, in this case, to find out about the box trolls is I'm, I'm coming to the information because I want to know about it. I don't care about the drama. I really don't. But do you know what the guy on the loading dock at Dr. Pepper said? It was very offensive. You shouldn't drink Dr. Pepper anymore. <sighs> I don't care. <laughs> you know what? Everybody has their own opinions. Everybody. They have their opinions on everything. And you know what? I've learned that I don't care. <laughs> You have your opinions, and that's great. You're allowed to have your opinions, and I have mine. You can hate my opinions. I can hate your opinions. Man. 
it's Are you fine. With her? <laughs> I mean, no, seriously. I mean, everybody has to get their big controversial banner out there saying, "Oh my God, this offended me." Well, you know what? Something you're doing right there might offend me. And do you see me do anything? No. Because it doesn't offend me that much that I care. <laughs> so what you're saying is that apathy trumps outrage in your case. Yes. I, I, I mean, it's so like. So I have perception trumps intent. Yours is apathy trumps <laughs> offense. I, if you really want to be miserable and pick apart everything, good for you. And, and that's kind of the main reason. One of the main I reasons we started care. doing this show was. The climate for DC Comics when we started this show about a year into, not even, it was about nine months in when we started piecing together, getting our prep work done to start this show, was a very toxic time for DC. You could not. Yeah, just as bad. <laughs> yeah, you could not go anywhere without just reading incessantly about oh, yeah, every it's, it's mistake. Still, it's still everywhere. It's it's not as prevalent, I've found. I've found it's, it's dying There's one down. or two people I see all the time like, oh my gosh, get over it. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, as I said, I understand some of the complaints that people have. I, I completely can even agree with some of the complaints they have. How they voice those complaints, maybe, you know, not everyone is on the same page on the best way of voicing those complaints. Uh, in this case, our, the emails we received were, most of them were very civil, I have to admit. Uh, some of them, unfortunately, were very accusational, very, uh, claiming that we basically were shills. And I, I believe anyone that has listened to a Catwoman recap before the new creative <laughs> team or, uh, um, I don't know, maybe some of Brian's shorter recaps <laughs> could, could definitely see that, uh, that is definitely not the case. We are, we are not shills. We enjoy the hobby. We enjoy the stories and that's where our focus lies. And, and I just wanted to make sure it was understood that that's where we're coming from with this. Uh, hopefully I didn't offend people by telling you that we're, we're not going to talk about the things that offend people <laughs> so. the internet's for that that's what the internet's for well we're kind of technically on the internet yes. that's how we that's how we divulge well this yes show. <laughs> but there's lots of stuff on the internet just just go to those avenues <laughs> yeah you could almost type comic books into google and you will find every story of those of those uh, various travesties of the week shall we say uh, are being very well covered elsewhere as, uh, that, as brian that, said don't look under the bed <laughs> You're happier when you don't. Sometimes look under it's the bed. sometimes it's above the bed these yes. days. Well, yes, yeah. I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> sometimes like... you don't even make it in the house some, to some, look some, under the some, bed. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there's bed bugs. Um, I did. I did want to say that doc worker did get me to boycott cherry chocolate, Dr Pepper, because that stuff was an abomination. <laughs> well, yes, I mean that was. I believe what he said was, mm, "This cherry chocolate cola is quite delicious." Ew, that chocolate sounds disgusting. Cola is not, <laughs> not a thing disgusting. that should happen ever. <laughs> Ever. So, so let's leave the the real talk behind because we're gonna have fun. It got really real there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, can't you tell? We're really good at this very serious <laughs> yeah. conversation stuff. That's why there's a uh, there's a reason for this tone of the show, and that's exactly it. It's like, <laughs> hey, let's talk about controversy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as such, let us skip all of the rigmarole and jump forward into. Can this we skip week's... and jump forward? Yes, we can. Let's do it both now. On your marks, get that go, it's Brian. Swamp Thing, number 38. Yeah, I realize we have been talking for years about how much fun this book has been and how much we enjoy it. It's coming to a close in like two issues, and we have never given it the front spot. It's a shame. It was due. I needed yeah. to at least get it in there once before this comes to a close. Yeah. So, Swamp Thing, leader of the green, plant, plant man. Plant man. Plant man. Is he moss man? Not moss man. Does he smell like pine salt? He doesn't review movies ridiculously favorably in the Cleveland market. <laughs> There's one for the Northeast Ohio people. I give it a scintillating eight. I give it an average eight. <laughs> this movie left me kind of cold. I'm going to give it an eight. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to keep interviewing famous people. So, Swamp Thing number eight. <laughs> I started on something. Um, Swamp Thing, he's fighting the computers, the metal. Have, have risen. Robots are trying to take over the world. Those pesky robots. They're fighting against plants and animals and whatnot. And so Swamp Thing's like, oh man, what are we going to do to take care of these metal people? When the metal people say, hey, we should, Swamp Thing's really good at taking care of us. Maybe we should get someone to take care of, you know, the metal people as well. And so they have recruited Swamp Thing arch enemy Lady Weeds 
to be the new avatar of the metal. Not exactly the most uh, mentally stable no, person no. to put in charge either. A little cray cray. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. And so she has also teamed up with uh, Anton Arcane, formerly of the Rot, and uh, Mickey, the gray mushroom lady. Yeah. Who's also now part robot. Yes. They gave her a robot body. Yes. And so uh, Anton Arcane, being a creepy, rot obsessed. Uh, drifter now, he has managed to dig up the bones of Alec Holland, the former human body of Swamp Thing. So he's a Misfits fan? Yes. And so you know what that means when you've got the bones of your arch enemy, that means you start making out with each other. No, no, what? Wait, yeah. wait, okay, pause. Wait, yeah. what? Pause. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Where are they like making out because they, they're like, yeah, we got bones! Woo! Make <laughs> out! Well, there's bones, all right. But, um... <laughs> So Machine Queen, that's kind of, I think that's sort of what they've been referring to Lady Queen. Yes, they've been kind of giving her that as a subtitle. Yeah, yeah. so Machine Queen and Antiron Art Marcane, they start making out. Uh, Calculus does not like it one bit. Calculus is a little like a, like, internet that walked as a man guy from (laughs) TMI, guys, come on. Uh, And, you know, they're just like, okay, hey, you know, this is working out pretty well. Uh, Hey, Mickey, you want to join in on this? And uh, she's into the menage. Well, yeah. Calculus rambles about how it's well, like they discovered plutonium because the internet. So and, what you're uh, saying, they they have a Mickey Minaj? Maybe. Hmm. Intriguing. I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, but the, the uh, evil three-way makeouts um, lead to this gigantic, like, rot mushroom robot cocoon. With forming, bones in it. <laughs> with bones in it. And then out of that comes, uh, so making out creates some kind of horrific Alec Holland rot machine fungus hybrid monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems pretty normal in this book, honestly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. Yep, yep, So they attack Swamp Thing around the world like the wolf did in previous issues. So they can capture the serene guy, uh, Guarev, and uh, Mickey takes control of him with that fungus that takes control of ants and makes zombies out of them that people won't stop posting on their Facebook, which, of course, is another reason why calculus should not be hanging out with mushroom people. No, mm-hmm. no. Too much information for them. So, um, Swamp Thing has some issues with the creepy monster Alec Holland. Uh, well, other than the fact that it's his body now his merged body. with machines with and the, rot with the and weird, With the weirdest speech pattern humanly possible. Yes, who is also apparently trained to talk by the internet. Yes, nice to meet you. My name is Alec Holland. I like plants. I like you. You are a plant. <laughs> they make uh, Guarev let Mickey and Anton into the green, and Anton gets his rot powers back. This is your last chance, Anton Arcane. We've screwed up. Consistently throughout this entire series, we like the cut of your jib. <laughs> well, he is kind of in Green Central at that point, and they're like, "Well, we don't really like you, the Parliament of the Rot. We don't really like you, but all you have to do is just kind of flick your finger, and you'll take care of the Green for us." So, I guess we reinstate you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he gives Swamp Thing the blight from inside of him, and that is where we are left off. And he's all about those menages. He's inside Swamp Thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. That's gross. <laughs> Yep, going blue, going blue, You're going blue, going blue with Contro- the green. Controversial. Going blue with the green. Going blue That's with what the I- <laughs> Always trying to go blue with the green. I tell you, I'm sorry. What did you think though? Pretty solid <laughs> as always. It's good. It, things are building. It's mounting. Yeah, and you can tell it's it's kind of circling that drain to come to the end here mm-hmm. of uh, at least this storyline with the machines. Again, it's been such a great way of building a mythos around him and adding it back in with the new 52. I know some of this stuff has been around before, i.e. the gray with the mushroom people. I don't think the machines, I think they're a new introduction. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a, a great thing, as well as the Parliament of Trees now have some personalities because they're characters that we've met. I think when it's all said and done, when Charles Soule is done with it and moves on, Swamp Thing will be in a good place that whoever picks it up down the line a year from now, a couple months from now, whatever they do with it, uh, it'll be in a great place to actually start from and go from there. Hope we figure out who gave him that multi bear, though. It's it's not just him going to be him <laughs> fighting eco freaking companies that are destroying the environment. Yeah, because that's what I really thought Swamp Thing was. It was <laughs> like, okay, I saw the cartoon. I know how this works. Uh, some some company dumps toxic waste into the Amazon, and Swamp Thing shows up and beats up some ratty CEO looking guy, and that's that's kind of what he does. He fights everything nasty. He does. He does, and in this case, uh, machines. Yeah. So, I guess machines are nasty. <laughs> so, the moving machines, on. you nasty. Uh, you nasty machines. Uh, moving on, I have Lobo number four, another one that uh, hasn't had the front spot for too long, so I'm just uh, letting it get up there because this is a turning point for this book. 
It's been kind of, it's had some bright spots, but it's, as I've said before, the supporting cast has been kind of, eh. I mean, there's not much to them. They're kind of still building them up. Obviously, they've only had three issues to really introduce these characters and say, have fun with them. Don't you love them? Aren't they great? So yeah, they're not the, my favorite characters in the world. This issue kind of turns it into a book where I'm like, okay, I can have fun with this title. I honestly can because Lobo has pulled into Metropolis looking for an assassin. He has been tasked with protecting the planet Earth. Someone put a contract out on the planet Earth itself, and these seven or eight or nine assassins from around the cosmos have shown up to destroy it, and his job is to stop them before they destroy Earth so he can get paid. And once Lobos accept a contract, they have to see it through. So he has gotten word that the... There has been something going on in Metropolis where these weird bullets have been shooting around, hitting all the superheroes and and hmm. people in North Korea and Lex Luthor and stuff like that. And, of course, Lobo goes, obviously, this is probably that arms dealer assassin that I know about. And if it isn't, he's probably going to show up there and try to get his hands on one of these bullets as well so he can sell it elsewhere. Pretty good tie-in, right? Yeah. Exactly what's going on over in Batman Superman. Um, so he shows up to basically Superman standing there with his arms crossed going, ho, 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 no, 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 no. We already met before and I threw you off the planet. Get out of my city. Get. Shoo, 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 Lobo. And Lobo fills him in on what's going on. Hey, I heard about all those bullet things you have happening around here. I kind of think I know who's in charge of it. By the way, he's also been contracted to destroy the planet Earth. And we kind of figured out how he's doing it. He has built a giant gun in subspace, like outside of what we can see. Like in Mario 2? Kind of, uh, except in this, this case. the door with a star on it. You open it up, it's like, oh, crap, there's a gun in there. <laughs> except in this case, what? it's not just something to shoot the Earth. The Earth is the actual bullet in this gun that he's going to use to shoot the equivalent of a, uh, do you know like the big immortal giant guys over in Marvel? The, uh, yeah, the, the celestials. Yeah. yeah, the celestials. Does DC have something like that? Because I think they were the they were stuck in the source wall. Okay, well, there's this giant robot looking like dude in armor, like huge looking guy with spaceships and planets all around him. And apparently, this this Snake Omega, this assassin, has two contracts: one to kill Earth and one to kill this giant celestial guy. So he's two birds with one stone. That's what he's gonna do. <laughs> and I was like, hey, this is kind of fun now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, so Superman goes, well, if that's what's happening, I'm going to come with you and we're going to find this guy. In the past, though, we've also Superman been... Superman and Lobo should not be getting along. Oh, come on. They're the best of friends. It's actually kind of funny because Superman puts his hand on Lobo's shoulder like, hey, man, you're going to behave. And Lobo's just glaring at him. And it's it's the two obviously do not get along whatsoever. Uh, we're also dealing with these flashbacks to deal with kind of Lobo's origin, so to speak, back on Zarnia where he was the the captain of the guard to the emperor of that planet. And the emperor just had this ritual down in the core of the planet that went south. Apparently, the emperor is all kind of weird and immortal himself and poured his blood into this pool in the middle of the planet. And now they have returned topside and everything has gone bonkers on the planet. Like the people themselves are going insane uh, they're screaming about how the planet itself is is tainted now, and nothing's right, and they're all trying to kill each other. And Lobo basically is spending his time trying to protect the princess, a.k.a. his flowy, puffy pirate shirt lover that he hangs out with and stands in the wind as the wind blows his shirt and hair mm-hmm. back behind him. Dramatically. Very dramatically. <laughs> uh, back in the present, Lobo and Superman get the jump on Snake Omega, and uh, basically... They go, haha, we got Does he you. He look like a snake. Uh, no, not really, not at all. Uh, he just looks like a dude. False and advertising. As they jump out, they're fighting all of his little goons, and Lobo pulls out his gun to shoot the Snake Omega guy. And of course, Superman's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You didn't say you were gonna kill him, and like smacks him out. And then basically, it's Lobo and Superman crawling over top of each other, trying to get to this guy first. One, so Superman can arrest him, or two, so Lobo can kill him. So it's kind of this Benny Hill, like, whir, 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 as they're running back and forth trying to get to each other. And, uh, Do they it, go through a lot of good corridors and with doors and, you know, run in and out of them. And no, not really. It's, it's mostly Aww. them trying to run up staircases and then Superman flies past him. And that's when Lobo grabs and starts tugging on his cape, which Aww. we all know you don't yeah, do that. No. You no, don't no. do that. 
So is it like MC Escher stairs or just regular? Just stairs? regular staircase. It's okay, not a staircase. In you a know, building. because everybody seems There's to do no this. magic. There's well, no magic. You That's just how never we know. know. <laughs> uh, so in this case. As those two are fighting, as Lobo and Superman are just crawling over each other trying to get to this guy, he just kind of looks at them like, okay, well, that's a weird way to be stopped and jumps into his spaceship and flies away as those two are still like arm over one another's shoulder trying to get past each other. And then whoosh, behind them, the spaceship just kind of takes off into space and jumps into hyperspeed. And uh, it kind of ends with Superman going, well, I guess that's done. You best be going now. Time for you to hit the old dusty trail. And Lobo gives him this whole big thing about how, hey, you're the protector of this planet. Trust me, I was the protector of mine. Enjoy it while it lasts because it will go south on you at some point. It always does. Uh, so I'm going to just head on home. And he jumps in his you're spaceship. You've been reading the past 38 issues of my series there, Lobo. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> he jumps into his spaceship with his pals and goes, did you guys do it? They go, yep. And they go flying off to go find the next assassin as we see Snake Omega calling back into whoever contracted him. And as he's telling them that he failed in the job, you just see the little bomb up on the side going bleep, bleep, bleep as Snake Omega sees it and goes, oh, poop, and it explodes out in space. So Lobo still got the kill. Woo! <laughs> but it was so much more fun than the earlier issues. It was, it was, it's his interactions, I think. Something with, uh, Superman and Lobo always work well together. Yeah, I don't know why. There's just something about the crossover issues. Like, that was my introduction to Lobo with someone saying, Find some old issues of Superman where he's fighting Lobo, and that's all you need to know about the character. I understand they're, like, completely different personality-wise. and this one, they're drawing that parallel that they were both protectors of their planet. I know that's a new yeah. element. That wasn't what it was before. So they have, like, this common link, but at the same time, they are so different, especially with Sexy Time Lobo. I mm-hmm. would assume uh, uh, 90s Metal Lobo, probably more differences, though. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably one or two. It did make for one of the better episodes of the animated series. <laughs> it did. Yeah, the one with uh, Brainiac out in space. You mean? Was that Brainiac? Was out it Brainiac? Yeah, because it, 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 it was someone. It was someone. They both got the locked yeah. in the zoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, whatever. Uh, it, it's a lot better. I think it's 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 found its voice, and uh, I think Colin Bunn's gonna have some fun with it moving forward. Good, good, good. So moving on. Moving on to Green Arrow thirty eight. Oh, so, it's our bro time. So Kreisberg and Sokolowski, the <laughs> the writers for writer, writers slash creators for the Arrow TV show, have been given the comic book as well to maybe make the comic book a little bit more like the TV show, a little bit, and maybe do some stuff that they can't do on the TV show. So um, the past two issues have been them trying to make Green Arrow as much like the TV show as possible, and uh, this issue is not that. Oh, at all? No, you don't think so? Because I think uh, uh, Felicity was about as Felicity as well, Felicity she's as could Felici- be. Well, <laughs> she, she, she is full Felicity, but... um, We had some full frontal Felicity. <laughs> is that going to be the title of the episode so we can get more hits? No, <laughs> okay. no, no, no. So um, the issue, um, the last issue, Team Arrow got thrown out of an evil Zeppelin, so Green Lantern caught them, and they fight a giant mecha, and Green Lantern makes a glowing green arrow suit for Ali to fight the mecha with. Yeah, you, could do, you could do that on network television, Yeah, right? all the time. You just <laughs> yeah. kind of put some glowy stuff on them. Yeah. And uh, Malcolm King, who is Malcolm Merlin, basically. No, he's not. He's not at all. <laughs> he has Mia Dearden, who's basically Thea Queen. No, she uh, isn't. <laughs> and and uh, also, he kidnapped Ali's girlfriend that he just suddenly had and we're supposed to care about, and I don't think I've mentioned in any of the reviews. No, I don't think you have, actually. No, because she's been, she's been of... such a non-entity, and it's like, oh, we're supposed to care about you? Yeah, they okay. really haven't developed her at all. Yeah, it's so. like she just suddenly showed up. It's like, where did you come from? You haven't been anywhere else. She was over city. there. Yeah. You know. No. There. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some hullabaloo with a crazy doctor in a hospital, and Katana's there. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an ensuing fracas that Malcolm that allows Malcolm to uh, turn public favor against Green Arrow, and suddenly everyone's hunting him for a cash reward. And Green Lantern leaves, and Malcolm King is going to stuff Ollie's girlfriend in a refrigerator. And oh my gosh, so much stuff is happening! Yeah, yeah. Yep. What do you think of the the bro time of uh, Green Arrow, Green Lantern? <laughs> they hate each other. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> It's like this begrudging respect. Like, oh, of. we both wear green. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get teamed up all the time. You know this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, the fact that when they were trying to be sneaky and it's Green Lantern glowing off to the side, he's like, dude, you're not being very sneaky. Yes. You're like a giant light bulb. Fine. God, what an ass. <laughs> yeah, they're, in, they're in pure darkness. Ali puts on his night vision goggles. He's Green Lantern lights up and he's like, um, you're kind of blinding me with that over there. <laughs> 
Thanks. Not very conspicuous. I guess. <laughs> I do love Jerk Hal Jordan playing against everybody. Yeah. Like he... just like Justice League War Green Lantern. That's the Green Lantern I want to read about all the time. <laughs> when he's busy being the leader off in space, it's a little boring. When he's like being the jerk around our superheroes, it's funnier. Man, I wish I would have changed the order a little bit because you're going to get just that in Green Lantern this week. Okay. Uh, but instead, uh, what did you, I, I sincerely want your opinion on this because mm-hmm. this is obviously a huge change in direction from the Lemire Sorrentino stuff. Yeah. Uh, it is not the, the, international conspiracy of clans and and ancient myths and everything like that this is pretty much a a corrupt politician kind of that has bought everyone in the city and is turning them against green arrow yeah while crazy things like the tv show people show up uh we get analogs of tv people and green lantern just kind of pops in yeah <laughs> for no particular reason but he's there and he was fun. texted yeah, yeah, he was Remember? texted. Yeah, you're Green right. Arrow did text him and say, hey, I'm getting on a blimp. You know what that means. I'm going to get thrown off it, so <laughs> yeah. could you come catch me? <laughs> so this yeah. happens often? Uh, I think Green Arrow gets tossed out of anything, really. Yeah. It's kind of his MO. Like, every time he shows up somewhere, he gets either tossed out of a window, a car, off mm-hmm. a train that one time. He's <laughs> never going to team up with Open Window Man at no, all. No, no. Or they would make the ultimate team. Maybe. One of the two. Maybe. One of the two. You wouldn't have to crash through the glass every time he gets tossed out a window. I want to write an Open Window Man series. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at the end of the day, is this scratching an itch? Is this still kind of like a Green Arrow book that you're enjoying? Or is it striking a little too close to the show? Um, it is certainly not the Green Arrow I was enjoying. No, well, yes. 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 I mean, I... I really, I did not care for the initial run that I took a peek at, and I'm like, okay, we're going to make fun of Green Arrow for the rest of the show now. <laughs> and then we did the Lemire run, which totally turned me around on the character, and this is sort of like, oh, I want more Lemire. Well, yeah, I think I, we're all going to be sad yeah. with that. Uh, anyone that was enjoying that run, just like the the Azarello Chang Wonder Good Woman. I think he's not writing another archery-based character I like anytime soon. <laughs> nope, nope. I think he's absolutely done with those archers. Mm, yep. Clearly, there's, there is only one archer, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to check out his Hawkeye to oh, see yeah. how close he skews it. Because that has to be really hard to write both of those characters. It's, like, hey, you're, hey, it's, it's another one of those weird, it's like, well, you've got a lot of experience writing guys with bows and arrow. Why don't you watch come write ours? But make him completely different, please. Mm, yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All that experience you have, probably going to be more of a hindrance, just mm-hmm, FYI. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I did give you a second book to do as well in a row here. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just, oh, God, Justice League 3000 number It's 13. our bro time, It is man. our bro it's, time. It's broing out. Everyone's broing together. We had Green Arrow, Green Lantern. Now. Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. That's right. We aren't in this that much, but we get our significant amount of them. Uh, so Blue Beetle and, Beetle and Booster Gold are fighting the Blue Beetle of the year 3000 and a bunch of mutant rats uh, when the Collective, uh, using his Tariq prison guard body, uh, shows up to settle them down and save them all. And he also explains that Blue Beetle 3000 is quite possibly the worst legacy hero ever <laughs> as Blue Beetle, as a Booster Gold snickers at Blue Beetle behind his back. I like, absolutely Haha, you, you get the fat guy. Where, yeah, he's the fat guy and he's like, I am vengeance, I am the night, I'm the freaking Blue Beetle, man! <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, present day Blue Beetle is just like, has his hands in his, over his face like, ah, oh, oh. this is what happens, this is my legacy. <laughs> yeah. So back on Camelot 3000, Ariel Masters, the creator of the Justice League 3000, uh, sends the hyper-annoying Flash 3000 to go check on Wonder Woman while she's fighting the demons' hordes. Um, And they're taking a break from fighting demons and whatnot to try to get someone else on their side, and it turns out it's Ice. The Ice from the old Justice League International. Yes, the exact same one, because she is actually an Ice Goddess. Yeah, she is an an Ice Goddess. She is immortal. So, um... She's right, and I so do she's love Elsa? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, she built an ice castle. Yeah, well, there goes, check off that let it go joke I'm going to do later. <laughs> um, so I have to bring up Frozen every single day. I just do. I know, I know. You just do, <laughs> huh? Yep. It makes it a lot easier, what, with winter and all. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the sub-zero temperatures. Yes. It helps as well. <laughs> Yeah, I do love the fact that Wonder Woman refers to the fact it's like, oh yes, I know who that is. She's from a lesser version of the JLA. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was kind of JL Jr. is what mm-hmm. he, they were on. <laughs> we were very important. Thank you very much. So she is kind of imprisoned there by the demon. And when the demon sees that she's back in action and teaming up with the Justice League, he decides to summon Fire, who was her best friend. Her, 
booster gold pretty much. Okay. So so wait, can can girls bro out? Yeah. Can, yeah. Can they can, girls they can, bro? They can, they can gal out. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't well, know. Well, like guys have bromances. What what do girls have? Well, they have Galentine's Day. <laughs> oh, Galentine's Day. Yeah. That's what. It is. Yeah, that. <laughs> so they can only bro out once a year. Well, no, well, on Galentine's Day, you can have Day? Galentine's Day any day. It's just it's you can also do it on Valentine's Day. Okay, okay, fair yeah. enough, fair enough. I don't have that many girl, you know, friends that are female, so it's you know, I have like two. <laughs> <laughs> so all you need is one. I mean, it, we're not saying like a, a a swamp thing menage here. We're saying <laughs> a bromance. I mean, just two guys hanging out can have a bromance. I mean, we sit around and beers. We sit around and drink wine. I I, I don't know what else you know. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you call it if guys have bromances where they hang out and just kind of Thursday night? Okay, I, I, fair enough. I, mean, I, I don't know what I don't know what you want. We need you to have develop at least three a term. female friends. Thank you very much, Kelly. What? You have at least three female friends. Okay, I, I I do, but I hang out more with guys than I do with girls. Yeah. Because guys have less drama. I don't know, Super Douche has a bunch of drama. Well, I'm yeah. just saying. Bring it back to the series. <laughs> guys have less drama than girls yeah. do. He's Most- very protective slash maybe has a crush on the Flash of 3000. It feels more like a mentorship. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, like he's, he's slowly getting that like weird sense of right and wrong that he didn't have before. And yeah, and, said, and he's she's expressing his it responsibility. The, like he's expressing it in the worst way humanly possible. <laughs> but he's like, oh my gosh, she's in trouble. And he jumps out a window. And, you know, Batman's just like... he doesn't remember that he can't fly can't he <laughs> or it was crashes. when he gets excited he forgets things yeah. like he can't fly <laughs> yeah. and i also think when he meets ice he's just like well if you remember me that means we probably hooked up a couple times right and she's like nope not at all nope. <laughs> the fact that we have a panel of superman saying are you sure we didn't take the train down to pound town <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> the funny thing is is that reminds me of somebody i know that that was that was how he you know asked people if they you know he's like i remember you do i remember you because of uh, yeah that you know that was his thing i would probably just say yes all the time (laughs) just every time i saw him yep that's why you remember me (laughs) and also evil lois lane 3000 is lurking in the background yeah i don't know what she's doing though I still don't understand why she's evil. Even I think I think I think part part of it's just the joke that it's like oh haha Lois Lane is the most evil person in in history and also it might be you know Earth Two Wonder Woman oh who's, true, who's true Lois true. Lane which yeah. might be the more easy answer but right now it's being played for laughs so. yes there is so much fun in this book honestly the tone is light but there is a lot of stuff going on the freaking establishing shots that Porter does. On the uh, the battlefront, mm-hmm. where it's just that one page establishing shot of the the camp that all of King Arthur's Camelot three thousand troops have set up with yeah. Wonder Woman, and off in the distance are the demons' hordes and the the ice castle off to the side. So much detail and oh, yeah. so much there. Did you say he like put on Twitter? It's like oh, all those years of playing World of Warcraft are finally paying off. Yeah, but it's still. <laughs> My God, for just one establishing shot. Considering we always joke that our establishing shots are like, oh, we're in, we're in, uh, Brazil now, right? Okay, uh, throw yeah. up the statue. <laughs> there's, the, there's the big Jesus. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We're in New York. Okay, there's the Statue of Liberty. Let's, let's roll on through now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't need to put that much work into it, but it clearly shows that he enjoys, uh, making those establishing shot yeah. pages. And it, it, it really, really shows. Works, too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm continuing the bromance action. I mean, I think I'm going to call this episode Bromancing the Stone for maybe the four people that remember that movie. Yes. <laughs> uh, because I have Green Lantern number 38, where we have just come off of all of this intergalactic war with new gods, source walls being torn apart, uh, intergalactic civil wars, uh, all of it with Hal Jordan as leader of the Green Lantern Corps. And now that the Guardians have returned, they basically say, holy crap, you suck at leading the Corps. And do the intergalactic equivalent of sending him to his room. They just say, go back to Earth. Just just go back for a while. We'll call you back when we need you. You go take some R&R. Go over that. So we got a time out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Go stand in the Corps. <laughs> So he flies on back to Earth where he is met by the protector of Earth, Guy Gardner, in his full red lantern gear, going, whoa, 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 no greens allowed, man. Remember, we had a deal. The only one that's allowed here is Simon Bass. He's like, dude, 
it's me. It's just me. I'm just going to be pilot Hal Jordan once I get down to the land. And uh, they kind of have a little bit of a playful tiff between one another where he's like, okay, well, hand over your ring. I'll fly you down. And he's like, screw off, Guy Gardner. And he goes back down to Earth where he decides he is just going to drink away his sorrows. Goes to the closest bar off post to his old military base. Starts pounding back some beers. Drowning his sorrow when in Nothing through the door... Nothing bad can happen if a pilot's drinking too much. Nope, not at all. But in through the door walks Guy Garner. Rack him up, buddy, and buy me around because you and I are painting the town red. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Wordplay. <laughs> well, those two are kind of hanging out. And Hal does not want him there whatsoever. He's like, dude, I have had such a rough time. Just... Leave me alone. He's like, no way. It's not like I got very many lanterns to hang out with around here. So you and me were just kind of kind of hang out. And the entire time, he's just filling him in about how you didn't tell me running the Lantern Corps was so tough. These Reds, they were great guys. I lost a bunch of my favorite people. I lost Zillia Zox. I lost Skalix. All of them, they're gone. I can't stand it. Oh, it sucks so bad. Just dumping all his problems on poor Hal Jordan as he just sits there kind of half-heartedly listening, drinking his beer. And as he kind of finishes up his complaining run, in through the door, speeds Barry Allen. He's like, hey, you're back in town. Woo, how's it going, buddy? I I heard it was bro time. I heard it was bro time. What are we going to do? Let's drink some beers. I feel like it's been years, years since I have seen you. And that's where I paused. Because this book is also being written by the same people writing The Flash who we recall has a future Flash. Yeah, you're right. That uh, has lost contact with a bunch of his friends. And there's kind of a couple weird phrases and turns where I can't quite tell if this is... I don't think it's important in the long run of things, but at the same time... One of it's, those things where if you're reading it from that perspective, sort, yeah. of like, sort of like how in Avengers when Superior Spider-Man would be like ultra super villainy in Avengers and no one paid any attention to it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you mean like when he went into the fridge and ate everyone else's lunch <laughs> at Avengers <laughs> Mansion? That was kind of my favorite part of evil Superior Superman. <laughs> I, th- I, thought it, I thought it was the new guys ate his lunch and he got really mad at them. Was it? I can't remember. No, All no. I remember was someone ate someone else's lunch because there wasn't a label on it at Avengers Tower and that became like an issue's worth of drama. <laughs> so Whatever. Avengers Tower is my work. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> because... You gotta really label that food. Yeah. You gotta do it. People um, eat stuff out of my lunchbox and it <laughs> has my name on it. <laughs> well, apparently you didn't write it big enough. Uh, in this case, though, he, Hal doesn't even want to deal with him. He's like, dude, I know it's been a while. I just want to drown my sorrows in peace. Why can't you people leave me alone? And Barry Allen just starts dumping on him going, oh, man, you weren't here. All that forever evil stuff. There's still dead bodies piled up all over Central City. Me and Patty are having issues. Uh, it's it's such a pain, but you make it look so easy, Hal Jordan. It's like you're the perfect balance of just a regular dude and a superhero. It must be cakewalk for you all the time <laughs> out there in space. And uh, as he's turning around with the last round of beers... Uh, Barry Allen, he bumps into one of the tables that has a bunch of military people at it and spills the beer on the people. And he's, of course, going, whoa, ho, hey, sorry about that, guys. Let me buy you another round. And they're kind of like miffed that he spilled beer on them. And as they're talking out, Guy just jumps in with a cue stick and is like, bar fight! <laughs> <laughs> and starts off a bar fight with the military people where they all are just yelling how they're not going to use powers. And they get beat up and tossed out of the bar. And they're staggering around. And that's when Carol shows up who is looking for Hal, and Guy's just going, whoa, 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 I didn't invite her. I know this was bro time. I don't invite ex-girlfriends to bro time. I'm not that dense. Uh, so tell you what, come on, Barry, you and Uncle uh, Guy are going out to finish off this night in style. So those two kind of stagger off together singing songs all drunk to drink some more, I assume. Go, bros, go. And we get the serious conversation between Carol and Hal Jordan where it's basically a... Hal admitting that he is not, in fact, cool with the fact that she is dating Kyle. Um, yeah, I told Kyle I was cool with it, but that's what bros do. I had to at least just tell him, hey, you do your thing. Uh, but between you and me, I'm not cool with it whatsoever. I kind of hope that maybe you and I, even if it's years from now, can maybe get back together. And she just kind of brushes his cheek and goes, you know, I, I kind of hope that too. But that time is not now. So hopefully you find someone for you. 
kisses him on the cheek, and she flies on away out of his life, leaving a depressed Hal Jordan, leader of the Green Lantern Corps, <laughs> sitting on a dirty street corner with a broken nose and uh, beer spilled all over him. He had that viewfinder mask on. He wouldn't have a broken nose. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Another Someone reason why Carol some left him. Fingers. <laughs> Uh, again, though, that's exactly what you were asking for, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dealing with all of the people back on Earth. Mm-hmm. Well, you may get that for a little bit. Very good. Very so, good. It was, it was a fun read, though. It was all a right. very fun read. Moving on. Wrap all right. Up the half. Moving on to the new 52, Futures End, number 36. We've almost matched up the numbering. Almost as many issues of this as everything else. We start off in the House of Wonders. Amethyst has brought the dying Frankenstein to the Justice League Dark to try to fix his, uh, Formerly undead and now alive, but soon to be dead, dead condition. <laughs> uh, and we'll all be pleased to know that the Justice League Dark has barely changed over five years. <laughs> Same exact lineup. Uh, so it doesn't work, and uh, Constantine makes fun of Amethyst, who then stabs him with her sword. Yeah, uh, those two don't get along. No, didn't uh, he trap her in her gem world? Well, not only that. And then he sent Eclipso in there afterwards, like going, oh, no, why Yeah, not? remember that was the <laughs> part where he was like, whoops, kloop, and just punted Eclipso right in through mm-hmm. after. <laughs> so yeah, understandably, she's a little upset with him, considering it led to the death of her mother, uh, the destruction of her kingdom, and the entire annihilation and... Uh, Claymation of not claymation. Claymation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna make that a word. Suddenly the California Raisins showed up. They start singing Christmas carols. There's some ice skating penguins, you and, know. The, and leaving all of the world that she was from to be claimed by Eclipso mm-hmm. or claymation <laughs> by <Yes>. Eclipso. <laughs> yep. So, um, in Las Vegas, Sergeant Rock's team tries to figure out how to go find the Cadmus DNA vault. When Fifty Sue says, "Hey, I'm a plot device," and just makes it appear in front of them. <laughs> Uh, Banger and Mash, one day you'll get to do something. Someday. Someday. Though they do have the conversation right there that their job is to kill 50 Sue now. Because that was their well, latest... that, that was That was their original job. And then suddenly they had to work with her. Like, that's part of the joke. They were... Well, yeah, but about- then they're talking about how, well, hey, does that job still happen? And then Sergeant Rock's like going, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. But then Grifter can see through the deception that they're going to uh, kill that, them. Yeah, that. Yeah, yes. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Poor Banger and Mash. And- yeah. <laughs> So, um, in Smallville, Constantine is okay. He was just astrally projecting. Uh, they're waiting for Brainiac, and there's some stuff about how Smallville is either an inherently good place that Superman went to for a purpose, or a place that was so evil it needed Superman to save it. Just to counterbalance the yeah. evil. It was, it was kind of an interesting little conversation yeah, for like yeah. a little For side a Constantine thing. Superman, that it makes sense for that. I mean, it's a good blend between their two worlds. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, in New York, on top of the now hilariously suddenly condemned Wounded du- Duck Bar, uh, <laughs> which was run by former Red Robin Tim Drake, who, as we all know, has been living under the name Fauntleroy Froggenhall. Wow. Uh, so apparently when old <laughs> Fauntleroy gets knocked on his head, about 15 minutes later, people show up at his place of business and start boarding up the doors and windows. <laughs> It's a very, very high demand piece of property right there. They're like, has he been here? Nope, in 15 minutes, board it up. <laughs> yep. So anyway, uh, Plastique starts to get all handsy with Batman Beyond, and off in the distance, Batman right now is creep creeping. <laughs> yes. Right now. Yes, right now. We learn where Jason Todd got his that girl, super girl tactics of watching people yep. make out. Because... I learned it from watching you, Dad, <laughs> Bat Dad. Because Batman has even busted out the binoculars mm-hmm. to watch some uh, uh, future Batman and plastique action going on on that roof, and it, mm-hmm. it ain't just smoochy time. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So on the Justice League Watchtower, uh, Shazam is still wearing the uh, masked Superman costume, and Stormguard gets all huffy about him and decides to tell Shazam his origin story. Which, which was great! Yeah, he, uh, It was fu- so over the top, it was great! Yes, he was fighting <laughs> parademons in front of the White House, and that allowed him to uh, desecrate a flag and wear it as a cape. That's his <laughs> Are you power. a bad enough dude to save the president? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so they talk about how important Stormguard is. Like, trust me, I'm important. <laughs> Hell, don't show. Okay, yes, that was a little rough in that part. But at yeah. the same time, I loved how over the top his freaking <laughs> origin was, where he's like, yeah, I, I was I punched parademons. He put a cape, I put a, made a flag into a cape, and I, the White House was there. <laughs> and you the know. president got on the chopper as I was punching parademons in the face, and I became a symbol for awesome badassery. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, just then, a firestorm walks in, and it's a lady. And 
guys, I know this is weird, and I was just making out with Fauntleroy Froggenhall, <laughs> and that was even weirder, but just let me explain, and that's going to happen next issue. <sighs> so, uh, do you feel, really feel it ramping up here? <laughs> I do. I do. I'm really, I, I know this is kind of weird, but th- these things happen in comics, I would assume. Can we get uh, Earth 2 Lana Lang, Grifter, 50 Sue, and uh, Batman Beyond and Plastique over to the current day? I wonder if anything's going to be converging anytime soon. I wonder. I, I wonder. I'm sincerely curious. but these are the best versions of the characters. I absolutely adore the these versions of these characters. I know some people like the new Firestorm. Some people really like the new Firestorm. That storyline would drag a little bit for me in the middle. I'm kind of liking what they're doing with the new one right mm-hmm. now, but I'm kind of yeah. We can bring Firestorm along as well for the ride. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, there's plenty they can do. Old with. Firestorm wasn't doing anything. <laughs> what are you talking about? He was fighting off all of those. Uh, he fought Plastique off already. Is he on the Justice League still? Is he on a cot somewhere? I think so, actually. I don't he's think a, he's on, on a it. cot, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, in the uh, the Amazo virus. Mm-hmm, yeah. So after the break. After the break, yeah, you have more books. Yeah, I've got Detective Comics and uh, Action Comics, where we find out that while Superman's been growing that beard, he's been binge-watching Archer. (laughs) And then I have Batman Eternal number 40, where hopefully Batman can do a better job of being a bro than watching his bro make out on a nearby rooftop uh, this time, hanging out with Riddler, maybe, who knows. Uh, and I also have Aquaman and the Others, number nine, and then I will wrap it up with the Earth 2 marathon of Earth 2, number 30, as well as Earth 2 World's End. So hold on a couple seconds. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will go through those books. Like now, or are you just standing there like I'm ready? I'm ready to go. Well, well, well. <laughs> there was like maybe an eighth of a second after it went click, click and you jump in. Mm-hmm. Nice, very well done. But we are back, and we are back for the bat half. Kind of. Should we call it that? Because yeah. there's only like two. Yeah. I'm just gonna call it the back half this week because okay. we don't have that much Batman. Uh, but we do have Batman Eternal number forty because it's it's a weekly. It's always there. Yeah. It's like a constant, like the sun and the moon and the stars. And Constantine. No. no. <laughs> He's actually not very constant. No. <laughs> uh, but what we're dealing with here is the utter decimation of everything that has been built up around Batman. It's basically all being torn down by some mystery villain, and we don't know who, but this villain has broken out every single one of the Bat villains that Batman has dealt with across all of his titles from Dark Knight, um, what detective? Uh, the actual Batman series. Uh, does that oh, mean? Does that mean Wrath is back? Actually, I think he is there. Oh man, yeah, Rath. yeah. There's a bunch of people there. Oh, man. Rath. There's tons of people. But, but it also doesn't seem very hard to break out his villains because they all seem to be in the same place. Well, no, they were mixed up. They were at that. Uh, some of them were at the Greek restaurant. Some of them were in prison. They were all over the place. Mayor man. Hades, revolving door prisons <laughs> slash asylums. Uh, but this mystery person, whoever is orchestrating this whole thing, has brought them all to this warehouse where they have stolen all of Batman's gear. Basically, all of the bat caches that they were detonating, uh, they pulled out the gear first. So there's all these various bat toys all over the place, and they say, have fun, guys. Just all you have to do is go out in the city and trash it. And one person is speaking up and saying they are not really down. This isn't really their bag, and that's Catwoman. Who is basically like, yeah, I went legit. I'm a mob boss now. I don't do the whole costume, jump around, look at my... I went legit. I'm a mob boss now. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a respectable business. A long line uh, of years and years of this company uh, that they have been running. But <laughs> uh, but it's basically, uh, she's going, nope, I'm wearing the smart pants suit now. I can't jump it back into the leather suit, so I'm just going to get my car and drive away. And as she goes to do so, Firefly, remember that guy? The arsonist? Picks yeah, up a, a rocket launcher and blows up her car as she gets into it. And they're like, "Woo!" 
Woo! We just killed Catwoman. Of course, uh, Signal Man and the family gang night. They are there as well. Mm-hmm. And Signal Man's talking to Mr. Freeze going, you know she's not dead, right? And Mr. Freeze is going, you know, you're much too smart probably for the crew you hang out with. And we see uh, uh, Clue Master and Joker's daughter in the background like arguing over something. <laughs> and he's like, thanks, I think. I'm too good to hang out with these guys. I hope so. <laughs> but I am Signal Man at the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Clayface is taking on the shape of Batman, takes one of the capes and cowls, straps on all the gear, forms the, the, I'll take the form of Batman, and is gonna go out there and sow some chaos. And as he is doing so, we see Catwoman is watching from the rafters above, so Signal Man and Mr. Freeze were correct. She goes outside, talks to her bodyguard, K- uh, Killer Croc, who is no longer Pharaoh Croc, he's just in random street gear now. Boo. Uh, and says, hey, we're probably going to have to do something about this. And he goes, ah, don't worry about it. Batman can handle all this. He's done it before. So she decides she's going to take a different tact and says, okay, well, let me find out who actually knows about what's going on here, who's behind this whole thing. So she looks up all of the hits in the city, finds one for an exorbitant sum, way higher than it should be, and that would be for a person by the name of Stephanie Brown. So she's going to go out there and find Stephanie Brown so that she can... Basically, get the answer on who is behind this whole thing. See? It's all coming together. Now we know how Catwoman actually ends up with Stephanie Brown coming up. Uh, Elsewhere nearby, Vicki Vale. But is that the daughter? Yes, that that is the daughter of That busted in on family gang night. Yes, family gang night. She is the daughter that walked in and went, Hey, who's all these third-rate villains? (laughs) Dad, you're so lame. (laughs) And apparently knows who is behind this whole thing. Or maybe has pieced it together from the clues she found. Because her dad was Clue Master. So I'm sure there were clues all over the place. In the garage, just out back, just yeah. piles of clues laying all over mm-hmm. the place. She's like, ah, Dad, pick up your clues. Uh, meanwhile, Vicky Vale. Candlesticks, bent lead pipes, <laughs> rope. What is this? <laughs> Why is this all in the conservatory? <laughs> <laughs> Vicky Vale is able to pepper spray the intern Patrick who shot the editor. We don't know who he is. We just know he is obviously working with whoever is behind all of this. Uh, she ends up pepper spraying him, calling 911, and ends up going in the ambulance with the editor. Basically going, you can't die. You were apparently right. There is like a whole connection to all of these things going on. And obviously there is a big tapestry in play. You need to wake back up. Please don't die on me. Uh, meanwhile, Batman is digging his way out of an avalanche nearby because he caught the Riddler and said, okay, you're coming back to Gotham. An avalanche? An, no, an avalanche. Not an okay. avalanche. Pretty soon I'm pretty sure there's going to be an avalanche. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. But uh, he basically told Riddler, hey, you're coming back to town. Riddler went, no way. Detonated a bomb that caused the avalanche, and they both got buried. Uh, now Riddler has a broken leg and Batman's still going, you're coming back with me. And he's like, no, you can't take me back. I was trying to help you. Why would you take me back to jail? Because you're the Riddler. You killed a lot of people. We just read the whole zero year stuff. You're not a nice person. We know this. So come on back to Gotham. Uh, finally, at the drain of one of Gotham's sewers, weeks have passed, Brian. Weeks have passed. Uh, a very soggy Jim Corrigan washes out on the shore <laughs> with the body of Maxi Zeus like, whew, that was a stinky little thing. I'm glad they came and saved Batwing, but no one came for me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he basically goes, I'm still a cop. He uses his uh, specter powers. I was really hoping it was going to be Ugly Cat coming out of that no, drain. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, <laughs> Ugly Cat, you're alive. Um he basically expels the last of Blackfire, Deacon Blackfire that was possessing Maxi Zeus from the body, and then goes, well, I'm still a cop, so I'm going to haul you back to the precinct, and goes to drag him away as a bunch of children with glowing eyes watch from nearby. That's what I thought, too. I was I was actually going to ask you, is it Leviathan? I don't that's know. That's what I would immediately think. Yeah, that's, that's what I would assume if that's the route they're going. Wait a minute, are there many Leviathans? There are two Leviathans, technically. And they are talking about Leviathan on Agent Carter as well, which is probably a different Leviathan entirely. Which is very confusing yes, because I know. there's too many people talking about it. Yes. And the, the mobile underwater base for Shade was Leviathan as well, but yes. it was actually inside a whale. 
And apparently your house is under assault by like a baby deer based Leviathan because yes. they're all closing in on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like to walk up to the window and just put their wet noses on the window sometime. Really? Yeah. Man. It's very weird. Adorable. No, it's very <laughs> weird. I keep waiting for them. Like they're waiting for us to go outside so they can maul us, mug us, and take our carrots, I assume. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're getting uh, maybe a callback to another Morrisonian invention. That was yeah. Morrison's, right? Yeah, 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 with the the children that live underground and start all the way back in Manhattan Guardian, my yeah. precious, precious Manhattan Guardian. There you go. So maybe you're getting more stuff, Mister. Geez, all DC does is sweep Morrison's stuff under the rug after he's done with it. Marvel sweeps <laughs> this stuff under the rug. Uh, you know what? I spent the entire time that you were talking because uh, I realized other than staring at baby deer, <laughs> other than staring at baby up. deer, yeah. <laughs> Creeping baby deer. Um, yeah, I realized I didn't know what Wrath looked like because I've been making fun of him for the past, like, two years now. Okay. And uh, I, I did a Google image search. Wrath existed before the New 52. Yes. He wasn't a new creation. This is what he looked like. Wow. He was that... like a purple Batman with a gigantic <laughs> W on him. Yeah, that's a little different than uh, the Batman new wrath that we're dealing with that looks like a janky daredevil is what that looks like that even, with a cape with an off-center w on top of it man wrath oh and there's a w on his face as well that's part of his mask holy crud it's the worst looking thing red I've ever fury seen. and his red f face yeah oh and then there's oh and then there's a later one where he's just wearing a purple batman costume and then he looks like the arkham knight at the end in the new 52 okay Sure, why not? Yeah, see, there you have the the chronology of Wrath. Now. Yes, all right. <laughs> so you have some Batman stuff as well. Yes, I do. I do. I've got Detective Comics thirty six. So we're dealing with anarchy. He's exploding things, being all you know, explody, explody. Yeah, being all you know, angsty teen about stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, so Wayne Tower exploded, as it does. Um, it has been a little while, to be honest. Yeah. In comparison to the amount of Wayne Tower explosions we were dealing with right before Forever Evil, or heading into Forever Evil, uh, you know, it's 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 had some time to Still rebuild team, it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but luckily, Batman has dealt with an exploding Wayne Tower before. Many, many times. And he times. knew exactly what to do. <laughs> he covered everyone with foam so they wouldn't die. Hooray, Batman. So he had a rave? He had a foam party mm-hmm. at, at Wayne Tower? Yeah, he hooked up, awesome. to the, hooked up to the sprinkler system. and. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So Anarchy has a Christmas present for everyone in Gotham. He has erased everyone's digital footprint, debt, parking tickets, their subscriptions to Llama Fancy Magazine, everything. <laughs> and everyone gets... <laughs> Llama del- Fancy. Yep. And delivered to their houses, everyone gets a little Christmas present with a blank mask that they can decorate however they want so they can finally be the person that they want to be. The real Anarchy was everyone trying to find macaroni or glitter in a store <laughs> after that. <laughs> Poor Hobby Lobby was just know, decimated, just decimated afterwards. <laughs> so, Councilman Sam Young goes on Good Morning Gotham to throw Mayor Haiti under the bus. Oh, that Mayor, Mayor Haiti. Haiti. <laughs> Uh, he comes up, he came up in the foster care system, and something might connect the kids' skulls that the Mad Hatter had uh, with the guy who got thrown out of Wayne Tower who also knew the Sam Young guy. So, so I have to ask, is, is Batman, like... Re- 3D printing the children in the I'm going to get there. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. going to get there. Matches Malone and C uh, Mar- 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 tries to figure out who hacked into Wayne Tower by talking to his old pal Money Spider by complimenting the gams of any dame that walks by. Mm-hmm. That's how he's going to find out. <laughs> is Money Spider shown up before? No, this Money- little kid. Okay, no, this is a new new addition. I think. Yeah. But he was the only kid to ever hack into Wayne Tech's system, so obviously he's been keeping an eye on him. Mer, with the guise of Matches Malone. <laughs> so, uh, I really like that scene. Yes, I'm sorry. It was very good. Uh, so Matches, uh, I mean Money Spider, has been trying to go straight ever since Matches took the rap for him because Matches just got out of jail. He See? certainly hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe he'll use one of these masks to start over. Oh, okay. Well, maybe there's some vague positive to the whole anarchy thing, despite the whole blowing people up and ruining people's lives. Yeah, because his whole record was expunged. He no longer has all those things hanging over his head. He can just be a kid again. Yeah. But, meh, you don't need a mask for that, she. Meh, the meh. power was inside you all along. Meh. <laughs> Matches Malone is actually a motivational cat poster. <laughs> At Chiz Malone. So, <laughs> Alf- so Alfred then tries to map faces onto the skulls of the children with Batman's ultra-creepy Bat 3D skull meat printer. <laughs> 
He then. Uh, Why she, does that exist? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> honestly, does. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, Batman goes to shake down the Mad Hatter, but there's a huge Ooh, bank. Do you think it was the chocolate printer? It was not the he's chocolate printer. The children out of chocolate, and he's just going to eat them afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> like, who knew detective work was so tasty? <laughs> nom 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 nom. <laughs> Power is inside of me now. <laughs> so <laughs> you're so creepy. <laughs> so there's, while this is happening, a huge bankery bank robbery goes down because some bank robbery dorks painted skulls and like various spookums onto their masks. Yeah, lame. Super, super original guys. <laughs> And in the uh, firefight, which resembles anarchy with a C-H, do you see what's happening here? I because do. of anarchy with a K. Uh, Detective Yip fires on one of the robbers, and it looks like a kid. Maybe it's Money Spider. And Batman happened to be right on top of him, and everyone's got their phones out, and they're all, OMG, just Batman just shot that guy, and I've got it on video. Yep. So yep. things not looking good for Batman. No, in Detective very, Comics. very topical as well, mm-hmm, I would yeah. say. Um, just a smidge. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a skosh. It's a... It was actually, it was like the, the guys that were actually doing the robbery ran around the corner. The cops came around the corner just as I think it was Money Spider came around and he was just holding his mask yeah, and they yeah. assumed he was the guy in the mask and, and took the shot. But even Bullock is like, no, don't take the shot. And Batman's like, oh shit, don't take the shot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now we have to, to deal yip. with the, with Gotham turning against Batman for shooting the unarmed kid or the cops or, is anarchy the one to blame for this? Get it? Is anarchy mm-hmm. the actual mm-hmm. one to blame for all this? Yeah, Are you yeah. seeing the symbolism here? I see what's going on there. Bane sees it, and Bane <laughs> isn't even good with this <laughs> no, stuff. No, he's not. <laughs> uh, uh, and, very, it look, and, it, and it looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a given anymore. Yeah. I, I almost feel bad even mentioning it because it's just a, such a broken record where mm-hmm. we're just like, hey, by the way, Manipul and Buccellato, uh, they do very pretty work. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you guys didn't know that. I'm sure you're you're just learning this now if you've listened really? to Really? I had no idea. I know. I know. Also, Brian likes Grant Morrison. Mm-hmm. Would have never know. known that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Very solid. Very solid. It was starting off a little odd. Their first arc was a little, you know, kind of finding their vibe. It looked like... There, sc- there was a giant squid. There was a giant squid. You, you could never go wrong with. This one feels so much more... It has a lot more pop and energy mm-hmm. to yeah. it. And a lot more matches Malone giving inspirational speeches, yes. which mm-hmm. automatic uptake Sign us for me. Up, yeah. <laughs> uh, so next up on the chopping block is Aquaman and the others, number nine, 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 nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Yeah, it's like nine. a love potion, but Aquaman. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> no, let's just hit no, every. Let's not hit that every, kind of let's nine. Let's hit every meme possible. <laughs> uh, in this one, we're dealing with the fact that. POW, Prisoner of War, has had an issue where he has all of the ghosts of the soldiers that have been around him that have died inside POW of him. fights KG Beast and NKV Demon. <laughs> well, we're getting there. There's a lot of letters in this. MODOK one, so. shows up somehow, <laughs> thanks to Access. Uh, but in this case, one of the ghosts that are inside him is one of the friends that he had that was accidentally, quote-unquote, Killed by operative in a firefight many years ago, and this ghost has taken over Prisoner of War's body and is trying to get revenge and kill his teammate operative, uh, who is able to fend him off. And then Yawara, aka Jungle Girl, as you call her, mm-hmm. uh, drop kicks him out the window, and they just decide to go back to work getting those launch codes for the nuclear missiles that the Russian team of uh, Mayhem has taken. Uh, as POW runs around the corner, though, whoop, 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 just got kicked out of a window, he runs right into KG Beast and NKV Demon. Yeah, so there, there you go. go. POW, NKV Demon. I'm a prophet. And KG Beast, they're standing there. And it turns out they got a message from someone by the name of Korak, a.k.a. the name of the ghost that is inside this guy's body. And uh, they're like, uh, you're not Korak. You're actually one of Aquaman's pals. He's like, no, it's me. I'm a ghost. I'm inside the body here. I possess it. Look into my eyes and you shall see. And they look in. They're like, holy crap, it is you. That's badass, bro. How'd you do that? He's like, oh, I'm a ghost. Ooh, spooky, spooky. And uh, they go, okay, well, cool. This is going to be even easier then because you're one of Aquaman's pals. So head on back, but pretend you're okay. It's like, yeah, I already did that once. That's how I got the jump on him last time. We'll do it again. Surely they'll fall for it. Okay, fine. Let's do it. And uh, so he heads on back. And he's like, guys, you are an operative. It's me, Prisoner of War, your best pal. Remember? Uh, I'm okay now. I just got clonked on the noggin there. 
felt a little loopy. I'm all me now. And Opera, of course, is standing there going, why would you think we would fall for that a second time? And his retort, very, very honest, blunt, to the point. Last week, you said you didn't believe in any of these ghosts. Now you don't believe that I'm not possessed by one of these ghosts. And Operative just kind of throws up his hands and goes, Got me on that one, man. Come on back. <laughs> and they uh, head on back to the Aqua Yacht with the launch codes. Yay, they've changed the launch codes to the nukes. Now the, those pesky Russians can't shoot them at people. So they head on back to the boat. Everything's hunky-dory, a okay uh, while they're back on the boat, we also get a history of Vostok. We get to learn his origin story, where Russia, in their attempt to build the ultimate cosmonaut, uh, basically made four, I don't want to say They clones. watched a bunch of Sam Rockwell movies? They did. Yeah. Is he uh, the one sitting on the moon? He was the one sitting on the moon. Now he's flying around with Aquaman and his team. Okay. Or he was. Now he, he flew over to the Russians because, obviously, he has a history with Russia, and they said they could tell him his past, and that's what they're doing right now. So Russia made these four copies of one genetically engineered human being. So there's four exact copies. And they went, well, how do we raise this child to be the ultimate cosmonaut? And there was a lot of arguments within the party. Oh, well, we should give him a great upbringing. No, we should give him like a, a farm upbringing in the Ukraine and make him like a big, strong farm guy. No, I think we should uh, make him like a book learning kid and make him through all the science and stuff like that. And unfortunately, the, the Vostok that we have been following now, the one that is awake, was the one that they decided, hey, let's put him in a broken home with abusive parents, <laughs> and surely that'll toughen him up. Put hair on Russian chest. Yes, yes. And, and so he's a little messed up in the head now. Uh, in, in this case, because of how bad it was, he's going to take revenge and ends up joining Mayhem. Who Vostok. Vostok. But at least we know we have two more out there somewhere. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, back at the Aqua Yacht, the team goes, yay, party time, we did it, we got the launch codes, let's all drink heavily and then go to bed, and as soon as they go to bed, POW, of course, being possessed by the Russian double agent, goes to get the launch codes and upload them, but Yuara goes, aha, I knew you were still possessed by evil ghost, so he shoots her and throws her overboard, <laughs> and then uploads the launch codes to the Russians up on the satellite, and uh, they go, awesome, we got the codes. Let's launch the first nuke at the Aqua Yacht. That's where we leave off. A lot of uh, uh, political intrigue, shall we say, but I kind of feel bad for uh, Operative. I don't feel bad for them. I shake my head at both of them for <laughs> allowing POW to come back. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone even acknowledges the fact that who would fall for this? They would have to be an idiot. Okay, okay we'll fall for back. it. <laughs> uh, no, so but... next up. Moving on to uh, Action Comics 38. The weirdest tone of this book I think we've had in the New 52. Yeah, just a bit. Just I a found bit. out who this big bad guy is. And... Yeah, so did I. Yeah. yeah I'll, be, I'll be telling you that. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. So after all the uh, horrible monsters poured out of the Phantom Zone at the uh, doomsday spot in Smallville, uh, Superman wakes up and his first thought is to find Lana. 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 <laughs> So, uh, the big bad, who is the new 52 Ultra Humanite, yeah. which I don't feel like I'm spoiling because I think Pack it's and Cooter, been all over the place. Pack and Cooter have been saying it in interviews, and I think they even sort of said, it's like, we might actually get around to naming him, but this is who it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. So he's now this big, horrific Aaron Cooter monster, you can pretty much call him now. Super spooky. Yeah. So he uh, marionettes Clark's dead parents at his old house, just like he marionetted Lana's dead parents back at the graveyard. Uh, and then we see that the Ultra Humanite has Lana as well and then disappears. Ooh, Ooh spooky. So Superman, uh, Hero, and Steel reconvene and try to keep the kids calm. And the old folksy people from Lake Edna talk about how they got the brain powers from the Brainiac and they've been keeping the Phantom Zone hole closed until uh, Superman came and messed everything up. Remember when Brainiac gave everyone powers? Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone, so everyone winds up with monsters on their back, and uh, everyone starts to freak out. And the monsters feed on fear, and it makes them stronger. And people start to get into the whole monsters making their fear feel better, so they start to give in. Yeah, like, like the fear is an opiate for the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where uh, as as they become more afraid, eventually it overtakes their nervous system, and instead of 
Every, the, the more fear they cause, the more the opiate is pumped into their system. And yeah. They, they're just like, ooh, feel the rush. Like this, yeah. <laughs> so a kid gives in, Lana gives in, Steel, he starts giving because he's like, come on, I tried covering it with liquid metal, Superman. <laughs> if that doesn't work, what will? <laughs> That's all I got. That's my playbook. Mm-hmm. Yours is Sons and, and Superman. And, super, <laughs> yeah, and Superman just grits his teeth and sets his jaw and goes, steel, steel, steel. This is why you're not good enough for Lana. <laughs> what we're going to have to do is throw this monster through a portal. Yep. <laughs> and sure enough, next issue, Into the Phantom Zone, a.k.a. Superman throws that monster through a portal. <laughs> and I joke, but I love this. This is yeah, great. I, it's I, really I mean, well we, done. We made it a little light of it there at the end, but mm-hmm. the, the style, the tone, uh, the creep factor alone. Yeah, I they're, mean, bu- is... they're building on the uh, less than spectacular doomed storyline. It, it had some rough spots. I liked the, the spots, risks yeah. that they took with it as far as mm-hmm. completely changing yeah. the dynamic of Doomsday. I really liked the risks they took. The Some of the execution had a little rough Went a little patches. long, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. that was it. I don't know what it was. A couple chapters too but, many. Yeah. But they're, they're really having some fun with the after effects of it. With mm-hmm. the, the I guess, a portal to the Phantom Zone is technically there will always be a tear to it in Smallville somewhere yes. that has to be maintained closed. If Smallville becomes the ground uh, zero of the Phantom Zone entry point, that's kind of a cool little yeah. nugget right there. Oh, looks like Smallville's got a Hellmouth now. <laughs> ah, dang old Hellmouth's moving in. There goes the neighborhood. Bottles and James says Hellmouths are good. <laughs> <laughs> so very good, very, very, very good. Uh, I don't think that's any surprise. I, I'd say it's ranking second to the, the underground planet stuff, the under, yeah. under the Earth. Because yeah, all that I, I Baca love, stuff love... is just beautiful and fun and mm-hmm. a lot of heart to it. This one is a lot more creep than heart. I, it's more of yeah, the it's, after it's, effects. It's a, it's a yeah. horror story with Superman yes, in it. Yes, very much so. Uh, so we're wrapping up the show by leaving Earth and going over to Earth 2. We're just going huh. next door, borrowing a cup of sugar, which we better get quickly because Earth 2 probably won't be there for much <laughs> yeah. longer. Uh, what we have been doing, though... Is, it's basically detailing the destruction of Earth 2, it seems, in the weekly Earth 2 World's End. In that case, the Earth 2 main title itself has kind of become a secret Origins Earth 2 style, where we're dealing with a lot of these characters because it is a a bunch of vignettes of different characters doing different things, so we're not getting much in the way of their backstories or character development in the weekly. They're kind of shoveling it over to the main book and just saying, hey, here's all everything you need to know about these characters because... We can't fit it in with all the other explosions, Michael Bay style, going on over here. Uh, this one, we're dealing with the origins of the Avatars. The Parliament of Earth have raised up these Avatars on Earth 2 to basically be the protectors of Earth 2. It's very similar to the primer stuff that we're dealing with, with uh, Swamp Thing being the green, uh, the arcane being the rot, etc., etc., etc. Except on Earth 2, we have the green... The gray, which is the rot there, uh, the white, the blue, and the red. And, and they get powers and they save the earth. Okay. So anyway, moving on. That's the end of the, that's the, end of, that's the, no, end of the uh, The white one is, of course, Sam, who was the, the fiance of Alan Scott, aka Green Lantern, who is the avatar of the green. Uh, the, he is the purest soul on earth too. And that is why the white chose him to be the avatar. And he ends up dying on the train accident, as we see in the first issue of earth two. And that is when the white says, hey, you can come with me. You can help protect your love and the planet itself, but you're going to forget who you are. We're the wind. We're the atmosphere. We're very just loosey-goosey. We don't really hold on to anything. So if you're cool with that, I, I offer this job to you, and he takes it to protect Alan Scott moving forward. So ta-da, one down. Number two is the blue, which eons ago... Atlantis was under attack by a giant floating eyeball that they kept calling it the the god of the sea. Mm. And uh, eyeballs are mostly water. They are. And uh, whoever was queen at the time goes, okay. Well, if that's the god of the, the sea, the aquabats are always fighting fighting giant floating eyeballs. You know. Well, there you go. Yeah. There's the link. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but the the queen at the time goes, well, if that's the god of the sea, I'm going to go find a bigger, meaner, badder asser. Uh, God, and so she digs down and finds a Lovecraftian old god and says, hey, you're probably kind of mean. Go beat up that giant eyeball, and that's what it does, and then it's going to raise all of Atlantis, but the avatar of the blue shows up and says, nope, you're going to be our champion of the blue, and chains him up and says, we're going to lock you underneath Atlantis until they decide to release you to protect the Earth. Ta-da! Origin of the blue one. 
And last but not least is the red one, who is Yolanda Montez. As we had talked about, I think last week or the week before, used to be Wildcat as well. I want to say Wildcat 2, the number 2. Yeah. She was like the the follow-up after uh, Ted Grant got injured, I believe, or just got or too old. Or shunted off to a dimension to be in stasis until the Justice Society decided to come back into continuity. Yeah, whichever. Whatever but it was. She ended up taking on the mantle of Wildcat in the old continuity. And this one, she is the avatar of the red on Earth 2 because uh, she's protecting her younger cousin who keeps having these weird visions and creep out things and all these medical issues and they don't know what's wrong with them. And as he's in the hospital, all these cats come in and he starts screaming, don't leave me alone, the cats will eat me. But then they do all creepy thing flesh fusing into a avatar of the red who stands there and goes hey little dude you're actually supposed to be a red champion so come on but yolanda doesn't want him to go and have to fight so she says nope take me instead and they do so turning her into this like big red beast with horns and they say you have to hang out at the tower of fate until we call you which if you recall in the second arc of earth 2 when uh do you remember all that stuff with wotan vaguely i remember making jokes about the wu-tan clan yes yes i'm sure you remember that part uh, they they were trying to get the helm of Naboo out of there, and protecting it was a giant beast with horns that uh, Flash had to run away from all the mm. time as he was trying to get it. So it's kind of a link into, hey, she's been here all along. We didn't just toss her in there, yeah. even though they kind of just tossed mm. her in. <laughs> uh, so that's that's basically the origins we get. We already know about uh, uh, Solomon Grundy is the gray and was the Avatar of the Rot, and of course Alan Scott being Avatar of the Green as Green Lantern. So let us move forward into the weekly itself, detailing some of the more action-packed uh, stuff that's going on over here. Are you being sarcastic? No, it, there's there's lots of action, I assure you. Explosions everywhere. Uh, where those avatars that we just learned of their awesome history and how powerful they are are getting raffle stomped by the Furies of Apocalypse and, and Huntress with her creepy wings. and uh, they, they stand no chance, it seems, whatsoever. They're just getting tossed around. But the Parliament of the Earth focuses the last of their energy into them so that they can recover. And then they take a dramatic pose and say, this is it, guys. We have to make our final stand. And that's what we get with those guys. Uh, in the ruins of Chicago, not too far from there, Dick Grayson's getting his butt kicked by Ted Grant, a.k.a. Wildcat, uh, because he's been mopey and he has to go save his kid because he made the horrible life decision of giving him to Constantine to watch over who was just left him behind on a train with some other creepy magic people as he went to do his own thing. And uh, so Ted Grant is now going to train Dick Grayson and uh, does so in a montage, uh, I guess the comic book version of a montage of them training so that he can be a better fighter. And Rocky had a montage. Yeah, everyone needs a montage. Uh, below ground, though, Batman, in this case, Thomas Wayne, the father, Val Zod, who is the Superman analog, uh, the actual Superman, maybe, or a clone of his dead body, we don't know. And Power Girl and Red Tornado are fighting against Yolanda Montez, who has been corrupted by Desaad. This Avatar of the Red has been turned against the Earth and is sending out all of these monster animal things after them. And Superman turns to uh, Thomas Wayne and goes, Hey, Thomas Wayne, just thought you might want to know this. All of these clones that are here and all of the things that Desaad has done... Uh, my blood is poison to them. That's why I was kept separate from everyone. It's apparently my little genetic makeup, uh, does not, is not compatible with them. So if you put the blood in them, they die. And, uh, Thomas Wayne looks at it and goes, Hey, your blood looks pretty familiar. Hey, your blood's Miraclo. Awesome. So I've been straight injecting Superman blood all this time. Well, I'm going to take some now and just shoots up some Superman blood. Uh, roids out and just starts wading into the fray, tossing monsters left and right. Kind of an interesting turn right there, huh? <laughs> Miraclo being Superman clone blood? Sure. I mean, yeah, I can see that. You got something there. Sure. Uh, on a, uh, I'm sorry, further underground in Atom's Haven, where, uh, Atom sacrificed his life to make a giant cave because what do you do when the Earth's about to explode? You just hide everyone in the middle of it. Sure, that seems yeah. like a good plan to uh, save all the people of Earth, too. The eye of the storm is the safest part. Exactly. So there's millions of people in this underground cavern, and uh, they basically are trying to figure out their next move, and they've lost contact with the other avatars. They go, hey, guys, 
someone's going to have to get up there and help them out. And Flash has this great idea. And he's like, well, what if we go find Famine? We never actually saw her die in London. Maybe we can beat her up if she's still alive and get the answers on how to stop these guys. So he and Hot Girl fly over to London, find Famine, and go, ha-ha, now we'll get some answers for sure. Uh, elsewhere on Apocalypse, Commander Khan, remember the leader of the World Army? Vaguely. Okay, well, he was the leader of the World Army. He found out that Mr. Horrific had put bombs all over their spaceship that they used to get to Apocalypse and decided he was going to go kamikaze against uh, Darkseid. It's basically him in this spaceship, like, giving his his uh, Independence Day. Today will be our Independence Day as he's flying up Randy Quaid style straight at the tower. Are they going to cancel the apocalypse too? Yeah, they They're are going to literally cancel, cancel the, apocalypse. the apocalypse. See, that was the better line right mm-hmm. there. Uh, in this case, he's flying at him. He's giving his big dramatic speech and how awesome it's going to be. And Darkseid's just standing on the balcony looking the other way. And he's like, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to win. And then uh, he just Omega beams the plane out of the sky mm-hmm. without even looking at it. It's the most embarrassing and short selling of a character who is actually pretty cool and that I have seen in some time. <laughs> I, mm. I don't know what he's doing. I'm assuming he's watching the birds off in the distance or yeah. something. Who knows? Uh, where nearby, Mr. Miracle, Fury, Mr. Terrific, the good one in this case, uh, and Sandman are trying to fend off Big Barda and her hordes of parademons. When Mr. Terrific goes, well, we hit all those nuclear devices all over Apocalypse. It's time to cancel the Apocalypse. He's going to do it, too, by detonating all the nuclear devices. And Mr. Miracle's like, isn't that going to kill us, too? No, no, I have a plan. You guys have those weird little floaty discs on your feet, right, that you use to fly around? Do you know how they work? Um, Yeah, but they're above your understanding, moral. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so you don't know. That's cool. I think I figured it out. I think it's pulling matter from a different section of the multiverse. So just use those things on your feet. Basically, use your sneakers to make a force shield to protect <laughs> us from the nuclear blast. <laughs> That's going to be an easier way of saying it. And they're like, yeah, we don't think that works that way. <laughs> and he's like, well, you better figure it out because I'm hitting the button right now. And it ends with the all of Apocalypse going up in a white light and a big boom and the shield being put up around the the five of them there. The end. Uh, I don't know how to feel about this weekly. Honestly, the 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 change in direction as far as creative teams is very much felt. And the same things are happening. Like the same storylines that were happening before the shift are still continuing. But I don't know if there's uh, the dialogue feels similar. Everything feels or everything looks on the surface to be the same. But there's like some heart or punch or soul that's missing out of it in these last couple issues that are kind of dragging me out of it. I don't know. Maybe Do you think it's like a length thing or is it just... Because you would think the detailing the actual end of a planet would kind of keep me pretty jazzed. And it's, it's kind of fallen a little flat mm. recently. Just the last two or three. I don't know. Whatever. I think it's the shortest of the weeklies. Yeah. They're all ending here soon. So, I yeah. mean... Maybe it'll it'll find its footing before it comes to an end, but I don't know what's been going on with it. It just uh, doesn't feel quite as fun as it was at the beginning. But that's yep, it. That is. That's all of our books. Uh, so much easier than last week, right? Yeah, very much so. Even when you have like less than half of what you do the <laughs> week prior, yeah. I felt like we could actually expound on one or two things and, and have a serious conversation at the front of the show. Uh, so that being said... Kelly, what can the people do for us to help us out? Because we're just shills. We just do nothing but shill products of DC Comics. So what should the people do? Buy the books. They should. We actually are shilling at this yeah. point. <laughs> uh, but it is a matter of you guys voting with your wallets. We're not telling you to go buy them all. We're not telling you to go buy something you don't want. We're just saying support the things that you enjoy. If something is out there that is grabbing your interest, if it seems interesting to even just you, if the rest of the world hates it, all you read is this is the stupidest thing ever. If you listen to us go, I can't stand reading this, but you love it, go out there and buy it so it continues just for you even. Screw us. Screw the internet. Screw everyone else. You watch out for you, man. That's what you got to do. You do you. You do you. Yeah, that's the phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do that. <laughs> Because the power's inside you, see? <laughs> uh, but make sure you go out there and buy these books, because if you don't buy them, they won't make them, and uh, nobody wins in that scenario. Next week, we also get a bit of a reprieve again. Another nice 12-book week. I, I love that 12. It's a nice round number. 
we get an even split of books, six apiece, enough that we can actually have a show of some girth, but, you know, have a little fun in between. I like that size. I think it's perfect. It's like bite size, but a little bigger. No? Sure, whatever. You're just, just staring at me like I'm crazy. So, uh, next week we have Grace in number six doing the dance of the dead with Midnighter, it looks like. Uh, Mortal Kombat X number one that Brian said he wanted to cover. No, um, no we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not going to do that at all. <laughs> Nothing against the book. It was just a matter of we were talking about our expansions and what we would be picking up if we did. And, uh, I laughed because Brian was like, Mortal Kombat, is that even DC? Yeah, it is actually DC. <laughs> uh, Justice League United number eight continues with a giant hawk god on the front. Yeah, sure. Uh, Constantine, number 21, as we deal with his stuff, uh, with Dr. Fate. Uh, the final days of Earth 2 and Earth 2 World's End, number 15. Clarion, number 4, coming at you, Brian. Oh, yeah. Uh, New 52, Future's End, number 37. Uh, Constantine got stabbed, but he's feeling better. He yeah. got better. Got better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, New Suicide Squad, number 6. Superman, Wonder Woman, number 15, with all that Wonder Store Magagi stuff. Uh, World's Finest, number 30. Batman Eternal, number 41. Guess who's on the cover of Batman Eternal, number 41? Batman? No. Cal Corcoran. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do. Uh, Leroy also... Foggenhall? No, no, no. Batgirl, number 38. Green Lantern Corps, number 38 as well. So a nice little round there of different styles of books uh, between Clarion and Batgirl and New Suicide Squad. I mean, that's a that's a nice blend of different styles, I think. Yeah. I think it definitely shows how they're taking different routes with some of these things. Anyway, moving on. Um, What else do we do usually? Well, you ask me if there's anything else I would like to say. No, I don't think I'm going to do that this week. I'm going to say something else. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to shill for some more stuff <sighs> that's also very very different compared to some of the other things. Uh, uh number is it 1. Pizza. No, it is not pizza. That's very different. It from is very these different things. what we're talking about. <laughs> and we are hungry, but what we're going to talk about what I'm going to talk about right now uh is over at Marvel. Probably surprising absolutely no one. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl was hilarious. Oh, was it? Yeah. I actually have not read it yet. Yes, I'm borrowing it from you after the show. It's it's very it's very, very fun. I highly recommend it. And also completely flying under my radar, the spiritual successor to Superior Foes of Spider Man. Uh the new Ant Man series written by Nick Spencer, done in a very, very similar style. Is it really? And even oh. and even and even has appearances from some of our favorites. Oh yeah. must read. <laughs> must read indeed. Must read indeed. Ah, uh, you are leaving those behind after you leave. Yes, correct? I am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. With our little poor man's comic swap that we do after <laughs> yeah. every show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we have to buy a lot of these books, mm-hmm. so it, it, it you know, yeah. we have to cut corners where we can as far as sharing each other's as mm-hmm. we're doing stuff. Otherwise, I would have bought those ones. Match us alone. Uh, so, Kelly, do you have anything you would like to add? You've been so quiet over there the second half. No, not really. I'm just tired. Okay, fair enough. Well, why don't you tell the folks what they can do to contact us if they have any questions, comments, or if they found offense to your statements about people being offended. Bring it on. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you have to tell them how. You don't just go bring it on and then walk away. Otherwise, you're not really inviting any criticism. No. It's like, yeah, you can uh, type DCR podcast into the internet. Yes, and it will find things. Or they can send us emails at... Feedback at DCRpodcast.com. Well, you have to... to, A little more authority there. Come on. (laughs) You can send all complaints to Sean at DCRpodcast.com. I think that will actually bounce back. It's... Yeah, it's feedback. Just feedback at DCRpodcast.com. So, uh, from all of us here, folks, I hope you enjoyed your holidays. I hope you enjoy your week. I hope you enjoy your books. Maybe enjoy your lives. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, enjoy your lives. Okay, well, Kelly said you have to enjoy your lives. So, <laughs> there you go. You have but to do it. But that's my opinion. You can do <laughs> Oh, you're allowed to hate that, too, by the way. <laughs> yes. Because she hates your opinions. <laughs> <laughs> So from all of us here, have a wonderful week, and we will talk to you next week.